and welcome to episode eight of Turn Bark Time. I'm the Turn. I'm the Bark. We're still going to be here for a little bit of time. Fun topic today, Barker. I don't know about you. Had a great time researching this. We were asked by Chloe Shields for the history of chocolate. Uh, and so we've narrowed this down for you. And our, we're going to talk about two of our favorite chocolates. So I'm going to talk about the Twix bar, and Barker's going to talk about Cadbury. But before we can do that, let's break down what chocolate actually is. So chocolate is actually beans that come from the cacao tree. Um, and I've gotten to eat it in Costa Rica, actually, this last summer. It was really cool. Um, the pulp of the flesh of the, the fruit is actually kind of sweeter, a little bit, the, I, if I remember correctly, also a little sour. Um, but the beans themselves, like you're like, chocolate beans, sweet, like Miss Frizzle taught me. No, they're actually very, very bitter. Uh, and to go on for terminology, cocoa is anything that's used in powder form. So the beans in powder form of some way, shape, and anything made from those beans is considered chocolate. Um, and so the tree's name is actually called Theobroma cacao, and that is a food for the gods. And so a lot of the, the first kind of like piece of history where we have record of chocolate, if you haven't figured it out yet, chocolate comes from the Americas comes from pretty much Mesoamerica. It has to be grown around the equator. Uh, environmental conditions can't support it anywhere else in the world. The majority of chocolate today is either produced in um, Meso or South America and the western part of Africa in like the Ivory Coast, um, Nigeria, places like that, Cameroon, in probably less than optimal conditions. But we'll get to that later. That's the fun stuff. Um, but anyway, they chocolate... For I think what'd you say, 90% of its life or yeah, history? 90, yep, 90% of has its has actually history. been a liquid drink instead of we think chocolate, we think like you know, candy bars, ah, nom, 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 nom. But instead, you know, it's this, it's this drink. You see the guys behind me, there's the cup right over there, right there. Um, and so they would take it, and it was a bitter drink, it wasn't a sweet drink. They would mix the beans with water, chilies, uh, maize, and a little bit of honey, and they would dump it between two pots until it got a nice like little like foam on the top. Um, and the, the way that they have kind of traced the history of it is by taking pottery shards and testing them for chemicals that are only found in chocolate is how we've done it. And it, it goes back like um, to like 100 or 1,900 BCE, right? So a long time ago, but we have, we don't start having like written, written because the Aztecs and Mayas like really didn't, it's more like hieroglyphs, don't have a written record of it um, until almost like, I think it's like, only like four or 500 years before the century mark, you know, we flip over to being in the current era. Um, and so like when the Spanish showed up, you know, they went and they met with Montezuma's, the, the Aztecs take it from the, the Maya. The Maya is kind of a culture group. It's not really like this unified system or like country. The Aztecs was more of a unified empire where there were like Tenochtitlan was the capital. That's where the emperor was. And when Cortez shows up, they're invited into the city, and one of the things they're given to eat or drink is this chocolate drink. And it's supposed to, Montezuma apparently drank gallons of it a day. They used to give it to warriors after battles as a reward. Um, it was trading cocoa beans as a currency was a thing. It was more, you'd rather have cocoa beans than gold. And when you really think about it, the functionality of what does gold do for you other than sparkle? Yeah. You can't really do much with it where like the cocoa bean was supposed to give you energy and vigor, you know, and kind of like help you get things going. And so that's where the Spanish obviously take chocolate along with things like tomatoes and other plants that have never been seen before corn and take them back to Europe and help Spain enrich itself. And one of the things that sorry, uh, one of the things that's cool about this is when I was doing my reading is that actually one of Cortez's men uh has a quote saying that it's supposed to actually give them powers like and so they thought that they would give them power over women uh so again like a kind of a a, a virile thing a fertility thing um and then uh it also when it gets back to spain is when it's not until it's introduced to sugar 
and and things like honey that actually like sweeten it that Spaniards can't get enough of it. And so it kind of continues that um, the root, the word chocolate comes from the actual drink. Uh, and we're, we are having a debate on uh, the linguistics of this word. So if anyone wants to do a little digging and, and let us know, we'd appreciate that. But what I have down is it's called chocolatol. Uh, and that's where the word chocolate comes from. And the, the chocolatol uh, is the name of the bitter drink that the, the Aztecs would uh, consume. And so uh, later on, so like, let's speed it up here to get to chocolate as we know it. In 1828, um, again, a Dutch chemist is the first one to make uh, chocolate in powder form. And again, up until this time, chocolate had been liquid still, in, even in Europe. It was only you drank it. And so there was like a chocolate kind of liqueur, and he was able to take the fat out, or what we call uh, cacao butter, out of the drink. And then the rest was ground down, which made the uh, powder for it. Um, and then he added salt to it to cut that kind of the bitter taste of it, right? And we think of now, we have chocolate with sea salt all the time. Like, it's kind of a, a trendy thing. Um, the man who gets the credit for the first candy bar is a Dutch, also a Dutch chemist. His name is Joseph Fry. And in 1847, he, what he does is he takes that uh, cacao butter and infuses it back into the cocoa powder which then allows it to be made into bar form, and he creates what we know today as the first chocolate bar. Uh, a couple years later, so what do I got? 41 years later, we have the introduction of a chocolate company called Cadbury. So Cadbury is founded by a guy named John Cadbury. Spoilers, you know, big, big surprise. Um, and so what he does, he starts off by selling the, the powdered chocolate, and then eventually starts getting into bars, he actually acquires the Fry Company and it becomes part of the Cadbury Company. And so like they first started, their first kind of like chocolate product they started that was molded was they were making Valentine's boxes in the 1860s. And then by 1875, I mean, I chose Cadbury because Easter's coming and I always associate Cadbury eggs with, uh, with Easter. You know, you can get the ones that either the hard shell with the milk chocolate in the middle, or you can get the ones that are cream filled. That's the one that I thought of. My wife actually asked me, get Cadbury eggs the other day when I went grocery shopping and I got the cream filled Cadbury eggs. And that was not what she wanted. She was like, but these are Cadbury eggs. And I go, but these are Cadbury eggs. <laughs> um, I'll have a fact on that a little bit later. These but anyway, eggs. <laughs> they're both Cadbury eggs. Yeah, Who knew? This, is a knife. Uh, this is also a knife. <laughs> oh, no, right. This is a knife. Um, <laughs> In 1875, they had 19 variations of their egg. Or sorry, in 1893, they had 19 variations of their eggs. Um, and they don't start making bars. They start adding that chocolate powder to milk right around the turn of the century. And in 1905, they launched what they call their dairy milk bars, which is what today we would just call those those big king-sized, yeah. or not king-sized, like a jumbo-sized candy bars yeah. that we're used to seeing from like Hershey's. Um mm -hmm. And then through that, they go through when World War One hits, they don't they get through this war without being acquired by the government. Um, and they send out thirty thousand parcels to soldiers. And if you think back, there's that Christmas truce commercial that's a Cadbury commercial where the thing that the British the British soldier leaves for the German soldier is a Cadbury is a Cadbury bar. Um, two thousand employees from Cadbury actually went and fought in the war. Really interesting to learn about that. And they held their jobs, and when they came back, if they were injured, they they retrained them into a different job or, wow. like, trained them to do a different career that they were now capable of doing. Cool. They were Quakers, and they even at one point built a model, like a like a, a mill village, wow. like a, a model village for all of their workers to live in, except mm -hmm. they were Quakers, so there was no pubs. Uh, yeah. Negative side for British people there. Yeah. Anyway, big. right? Really? Got to keep them happy. Um, and then World War II rolls around, and they actually got – it was considered to fit the vernacular right now of, of an essential industry. And so it was controlled by the government a little bit and they were not allowed to make chocolate using milk. They had to use powdered milk. Yeah. And so these Cadbury chocolate rations, like you see above my head were actually made from powdered skim milk. Mm. Okay. And then after World War II is there were, is where chocolate really kind of explodes and it becomes even more of a, a consumer item 
Um, and so it keeps growing. At one point, oh, it joins with like Schweppes. Yep. And then they don't, the egg that I was talking about, the cream filled egg that we're all so used to seeing here in the States, it's behind my head now, um, they don't roll those out until uh, 1971. Egg roll. Right. So, like, you think about the history of chocolate is actually not very long because it hasn't been, especially in Europe, which is where history, <laughs> you know, we wrote it down. Yeah. Um, we wrote I down always think about, I, I think about in 19, the, the 90s, the, the Easter Bunny commercials. They would always bring in like the dog with the bunny ears or the pig and they'd be like, are you the Cadbury bunny? Yeah. So um, how many of these do you think are sold a year, Mr. Turner? Cadbury eggs? Oh, yep. man. Worldwide. Worldwide. Oh. Yep. Shoot, I that's got I mean it's gotta be in the millions. I, I'm gonna say I'll say fifty million. Five hundred million Cadbury Creamfield okay. eggs are sold a year. Wow. And according to their website, I think seventy percent of them are sold in the UK. And what they did is they, they their stat that they had is that they sell enough that every person in the United Kingdom could eat three and a half every year. Holy cow. That's nuts when you think about it, because if if seventy percent you said seventy percent? Yeah. If 70% of their production is going to the UK, that's nuts because worldwide the UK doesn't have the population that the world would have. That's that's incredible. So it, it, it's really interesting. I have some more I have some more chocolate facts that I'll save at the end. So nice. So Barger's favorite is was or Cadbury, he picked Cadbury, and I don't have cool background to, to throw up behind me or anything like that. Um, but my favorite, my favorite candy bar. If if I bet my students, uh, we usually bet candy bars and things like that. Usually it's over their team beating the Seahawks. Um, so you know, usually I come out on top. But every now and then I have to buy a candy bar. Uh, Mr. Armengold and I split the split the series this year. Um, but uh, I chose Mars because my favorite's a Twix candy bar. And so Mars Incorporated actually makes the candy bar I wanted. And so I got to do some digging into there. So it was actually founded by Franklin Clarence Mars. And this is what I did not know. It was founded in Tacoma, Washington. The original Mars factory is in Tacoma, Washington. However, this was in 1911. So we're seeing again that kind of explosion. Uh, chocolate starting to be produced uh, on a scale when we get uh, moving forward. They, the, his production in Washington actually fails. And it fails because of another company that's there. And that company is known as Brown and Haley. And it was actually interesting. I was talking to my dad about this today. And he was like, oh, yeah, Brown and Haley was there. They failed. And I was like, Jesus, Dad, you are old. But that's okay. I still love you. Uh, and Brown and Haley, I didn't know this. They're the ones that make Almond Roca. And so Almond Roca, big staple at my house. Like when I get it, my family can eat it down like no problem. Uh, and so that's why uh, Franklin Clarence Mars actually failed. And so he goes back to his hometown of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and ends up opening a successful factory later on. And so what I found interesting was like some of the main things that we eat, like candy bars, we have Milky Way, m and Skittles, Snickers, Twix, uh, Starburst are all, all made by Mars. And so like I got some cool facts really quick before I get to my Twix bar. That was the coolest one I thought was Milky Way was actually made by his son and designed to try and mimic a chocolate malt milkshake. And I was like, oh, man, that's, like, really cool. And they're like, yeah, I'm trying to create this into a candy bar. Um, other dates that I got, he invented Snickers in 1930, and, he, and then two years later uh, produced Three Musketeers. Like, holy crap, this dude just coming up with new candy ideas on the spot. Uh, he eventually branched out to the United Kingdom. So there's a division called Mars uh, UK. And Mars UK actually pumped out some of the, our, our favorites, and I would say, you know, that I've seen. Starburst are originally from the UK, and they were called Opal Fruits. And I was like, that's absolutely fascinating. And I was telling my girlfriend, she was like, I think they should still call them opal fruits. And I was like, I agree. Uh, they also made Skittles, which I didn't know. I didn't know Skittles and M&Ms were made by the same company. I was like, wow, that's kind of mind blower there. Uh, and then my favorite, Twix, actually started in the UK. And it started in the UK in 1967. Um, and in mainland Europe, it's actually not called, it wasn't actually called Twix. It was called a Raider. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's one that could win. hey yo. Um, <laughs> but it actually gets changed to the Twix brand in 1991, except for uh, five countries that it takes until 2000 to change. And that is Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden, and Turkey all called it Raider still 
until 2000. Um, and Twix is actually, this is a new word, right? Like this is kind of the cool thing that we get to learn too. It's a portmanteau, uh, which is a word that has taken multiple words and shoved them together. And so a port, so like this would be like labradoodle, right? Uh, and, and so it is actually a portmanteau toe for twin biscuit sticks. Twix. Twin biscuit sticks makes Twix. So, and again, I, I browse up with my mom and she's like, well, I don't like their marketing now. They're arguing which side's better, left or right. And, <laughs> uh, and I said, yeah, but they, what they don't know is they're just twin biscuit sticks. Um, and the last little fact I have is they're made in Cleveland, Tennessee, along with M&M's is where they make all the Twix for North America. And, and so the United States, Canada, Mexico. But absolutely fascinating to learn about the Mars Company. The other thing is Mars Company actually also makes pedigree dog food and whiskas cat food fun facts for you so hopefully they're not in the same factory <laughs> yeah hopefully they keep production separate yeah just like the twix the yeah. twin you know biscuits yep um so one of the other things i thought about was people always talk about how european chocolate tastes different than american chocolate you know and so i, I was wondering what's the difference and there's four differences that come up um one of them is the amount of cacao that we put okay. in it that bitterness and so the United States tends to only put about 10% in, give or take some percentages, and yeah. Europe tends to put in almost like double that. So oh, their wow. chocolate is more bitter. Um, and then we, since we don't put as much of that in, we put in more sugar. Right. So, so we get more of it, which kind of makes sense because there's more sugar cane and things over like high fructose corn syrup over here. Um, the other thing is fat content and cocoa butter. Okay. They put in, they use more fat and more cocoa butter when they make their um, chocolate in Europe. And one of the things they talk about was uh, the Lint company. Lint comes from Switzerland. He okay. had a conk machine that like kind of rocked it back and forth. Mm -hmm. And that's what made that really smooth chocolate that we still associate with, with Lint. Lint company. Sure. Um, and then the origin of the beans. The United States tends to get it from South America and then, Europe tends to get theirs from West Africa. And so it's kind of like coffee beans where yeah. you grow it does impact what the taste, um, is. the taste, you know, yeah. flavor of that. Nice. So I think that was, yeah, that was for it, which also brings up, that's why when Ebola hit Africa, there was talk about how Ebola could lead to a chocolate shortage in the rest of the world because they get a lot of that from West Africa. And they were concerned that Ebola was going to wipe out the, the cocoa farmers. Mm -hmm which they brought trees from the Americas to Africa. So I think somewhere said it's early as 1822. Wow. Like as soon as they figured out that people wanted it and they could make, they, they controlled the market. They were like, where can we put it that has a similar climate and we can start producing more of it and not have to wait three months or two months to get it from the Americas. Right. So right. other one I thought about, which is why I have the world map behind me right. is what country eats the most chocolate per capita? Oh, I'm going to go with – I'd go with France. Yeah. Actually, you, Switzerland. I know. I, that's, I, I figured that was too easy. <laughs> and the best way that I could put this, I was like, how do I explain like how much per person it is? They eat about the same weight of a wiener dog, of Datsun. <laughs> um, each person eats a Datsun's worth of chocolate a year. Sorry, Mr. Ramsey. Um, they don't actually eat the Datsun. But uh, the which market. is only about it's it's about twice what the average American eats per capita. Really? Yes. So in America, the average American eats about a house cat's worth of <laughs> chocolate a year. What's the difference between a house cat and a dachshund in weight? Uh, apparently, at the average house cat, this is, this is I don't, these must be some really fit house cats. <laughs> it's supposed to be between like nine to 11 pounds and it's 11 yeah. pounds per capita have you ever held a nine pound or 11 pound cat <laughs> uh, they must be like barn cats that are out running around like living off okay. the land not that's you know mr whiskers who's like 50 pounds hey mama um but a dotson apparently is supposed to weigh 18 to 20 pounds okay <laughs> they're tight they're like they're, you know they're oh. compact they're, they're badger fighting dogs yeah so, they are they're tough all those muscles in there yeah. But those were my those were the ones that as I was going through this, I was like, I wonder. I really, really wonder. So the last one I have is that the United States makes up 
four and a quarter percent of the world's population, but we eat 18 percent of the world's chocolate. Wow. And I think they said something like Europe is responsible for like 70 percent of all chocolate sales in the world. Oh, wow. So as much as as much as people think that Americans are like, you know, we got the diabetes and the obesity and that's a huge problem in America. And you would expect us to be eating a ton of chocolate. We're apparently, you know, we're getting our, our sugar and fructose corn syrup in other places other than That's just crazy. traditional chocolate. So the more you know. The more you know. Knowledge is power. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, really fun episode. Thanks again, Chloe, for the, the topic and stuff like that. We're actually going to kind of switch up our format coming up here uh, a couple videos from now, right? Is that what you decided? I, I think so. Yeah, so a couple videos from now. Uh, so we're going back to school, which is awesome. We've, we've never been out of school, but this, we've been on spring break. And so now one of our videos a week is actually going to be a content video for our students. So you'll get a kind of inside look at how Barker and I teach our classes. I, I mean, as much as you can see from like a lecture standpoint. Um, and and that will be one of our videos. And then another video will be what we what people have requested. Um, and so we haven't actually picked a topic for next week or for this next one. Um, I'm going to let you, uh, surprise me. So you go ahead and you pick a topic and, and we'll roll it. I'll need some time to think about it. All right. So be on the lookout. We'll post an Instagram story. Let's say, uh, we'll post one on Tuesday. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll post an Instagram story on Tuesday, Facebook story as well. Um, revealing our, our next topic. So stay tuned for that. Uh, until then, I'm Turn. I'm Bark. And we're still going to be here a long time. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. And be well.